Good afternoon, everyone. Today we will explore the incredible variety of life in the animal kingdom. We'll begin by looking at the phylum Mollusca and its fascinating characteristics, classification, anatomy, and more. Let us dive into this world of amazing creatures and see what wonders await us. Mollusks are among the most varied phyla of invertebrate animals. Representing almost 25% of all known living and fossil invertebrate species, there are more than 100,000 living mollusk species. Furthermore, numerous extinct mollusk species are also known. The development of mollusks begins with a larval stage referred to as the veliger, which is a free-swimming organism equipped with cilia. Depending on the species, the mollusk will then grow to either a snail-like or clam-like form. Mollusks have a pivotal role in ecology and in human life, from providing a food source to being the source of pearls. Mollusca is a phylum of unsegmented schizocoelomates comprising octopi and squids, snails, clams, and oysters. Species which are crucial elements of the aquatic food chain, providing sustenance for numerous animals and humans. Additionally, they are paramount in preserving the equilibrium of the seas. Possessing a wide variety of behaviors, mollusks give an illuminating illustration of adaptation. Mollusks form the second largest phylum in the animal kingdom, boasting an immense range of species from snails and clams to cuttlefish and octopuses. These creatures have an unsegmented body, a head, a muscular foot, and a visceral mass, often shielded by an external or internal calcareous shell. While many mollusks possess bilateral symmetry, some, for instance snails, are asymmetrical. Both terrestrial and aquatic mollusks can be discovered in a range of habitats across the globe. The body of invertebrate phyla can be divided into two parts. The visceral mass and the mantle. The mantle cavity lies between them. It holds the tinnitia which gives both respiration and excretory functions. The mantle is a soft, spongy layer of skin which secretes the shell. The body cavity, or hemocele, mostly covers the visceral mass, with the true coelom mainly present in the kidneys, gonads and pericardial space. Regarding animal diversity I, invertebrate phyla, slide 6 emphasizes on the presence of a radula, or a phyle-like rasping organ, in the buccal cavity, and the presence of hemocyanin as the respiratory pigment. Additionally, except for cephalopods, the circulatory system is of open type, and the nervous system consists of ganglia, commissures and connectives. Invertebrate phyla are extremely important when discussing animal diversity. These creatures are unisexual, meaning they possess two distinct sexes and reproduce through egg-laying. Their development consists of an indirect process, which includes a ciliated veliger larva stage. Metanephridia are typically used as excretory organs, while eyes, tentacles, and an osphradium are employed as sense organs. The osphradium is of particular importance to certain species such as bivalves and gastropods, as it assists in evaluating the water purity. Invertebrate phyla of the animal kingdom is incredibly diverse, with seven different classes of species, Aplicophora, Polyplacophora, Monoplacophora, Gastropoda, Scapopoda, Pelecipoda and Cephalopoda. Each class encompasses a number of species that vary in size, shape, and behavior. Exploring the area of the animal kingdom that these phyla belong to can be fascinating, as there is much to learn from them. Aplicophora is a class of mollusks that differs from other mollusks by its lack of mantle, shell, foot, and nephridia. Instead, they have a radula, a cuticle containing calcareous spicules, and occasionally a mid-ventral groove which is similar to the foot of other mollusks. Examples of Aplicophora are Neomenia and Chaetoderma. Exploring the characteristics of the chitin, which belongs to the class Polyplacophora, the invertebrate mollusk is bilaterally symmetrical and dorsoventrally flattened. Its shell is composed of eight transverse plates, or valves, and a set of gills that can range from 6 to 88 pairs. Development includes a trochophore larva. The foot of the chitin is ventral, elongated, and flat. 
Discussing animal diversity I, we will have a particular focus on the invertebrate phyla. These creatures have been around for millions of years, they being bilaterally symmetrical and classified as monoplicophora. Neopolina is among the most famous examples of this phylum, being discovered in the deep sea off the Pacific coast of Costa Rica in 1952 by the Galathea vessel. Let us now take a closer look at these invertebrates. Neopolina galathea is an animal with a single, plate-like shell. Its internal organs are unique, featuring nephridia and gills with serial repetition, and a heart with two pairs of atria opening into two ventricles. This creature is just one of many that illustrate the vast diversity among invertebrate phyla. This slide focuses on exploring animal diversity of the phylum gastropoda. It is the largest and most diverse class of organisms, including snails, slugs, limpets, and more. The defining characteristic of gastropoda is the presence of an external shell, except for aplasia, which is a univalve with a spirally coiled or internal shell. Mostly found in marine environments, some species are also found in fresh water and on land. We can observe that invertebrate phyla have a distinct head with tentacles and eyes, a radula in the buccal cavity, a ventral, flattened and muscular foot which helps in creeping, and can possess either gills or lungs or both as respiratory organs. Exploring the animal diversity of this phyla, allows us to gain a better understanding of these creatures. Torsion is a phenomenon observed across several classes of invertebrates and plays an instrumental role in their growth and evolution. It is characterized by the unequal growth of one side of the visceral mass, leading it to rotate up to 180 degrees. Examples of species which feature torsion can be found such as the apple snail, sea hare and sea lemon. They are generally dioecious and develop indirectly via the presence of a villager larva. An understanding of torsion is key to gaining knowledge of the diversity of invertebrates. Scaphopida, referred to as tusk shells or tooth shells, are a remarkable class of marine invertebrates. Possessing cone-shaped feet which grant them great digging abilities, they have no eyes, tentacles, tinnitia, or atria. Instead, they boast a great number of captacula. Thread-like structures which aid in the capturement of food. Examples of scaphopida include dentalium and pulselum. The class Pelesipoda includes mussels, oysters, and clams. These animals have a laterally compressed body covered in a shell composed of two valves. The head and other sensory appendages are greatly reduced, whereas the foot is wedge-shaped and used for digging. Some species of Pelesipoda possess byssus threads which attach them to the substratum and keep them in place. Invertebrates are a vast group of organisms that vary greatly in form and inhabit a variety of habitats. Some of these animals have the distinguishing feature of a radula while others do not. Feeding methods amongst invertebrates vary as they can be suspension or filter feeders, with some containing a crystalline style in their stomachs to aid starch's digestion. Additionally, plate-like gills found in invertebrates are used to help with respiration. A thorough appreciation of their diversity is essential to comprehending the full scope of the ecosystems they inhabit. Focusing on the animal diversity I invertebrate phyla slide, these organisms often demonstrate dioecy, or having separate sexes, and indirect development which involve larval forms such as trochophore and veliger. To illustrate this concept, freshwater mussels like Unio have a glochidium larva that lives on the gills of fish. Examples of these creatures include Unio, Mytilus, and Pinctada, with the latter being a pearl oyster. Cephalopoda is an incredibly unique and captivating class of invertebrate marine mollusks, consisting of cuttlefishes, squids, octopuses, and nautiluses. The defining feature of cephalopods is their head, which holds two eyes which resemble those of a vertebrate, as well as a pair of beak-like jaws in the buccal cavity. Depending on the species, a cephalopod's shell can either be external and multi-chambered like a nautilus, internal like a squid or cuttlefish, are completely absent, like with an octopus. Cephalopods can be found in multiple regions of the world's oceans, making them truly incredible creatures. 
Mollusks are a varied and widespread group of invertebrates. They present distinctive characteristics adapted to their habitat, like a shell, tentacles, suckers, a siphon, an ink gland and tinidia, atria and nephridia. Lolago and sepia are two examples of mollusks which show adaptations to aquatic life. They have 8 to 10 arms with suckers around the mouth. Sepia possesses a cuttlebone whereas Lolago has a pen. These numerous specializations attest to their ability to live and thrive in an aquatic environment. Cephalopoda is an invertebrate phylum that has a closed circulatory system, 2 to 4 atria, a ventricle, and a well-developed, cartilaginous brain case. It is distinct from other invertebrates for its direct development, which is without the need for metamorphosis. I will be discussing three species found in the invertebrate phyla. Sepia, our cuttlefish, is capable of camouflage and an array of colors. Archituthus, otherwise known as the giant nautilus, has an eye-catching spiral shell. Octopus, sometimes referred to as the devilfish, have remarkable intelligence and are able to solve puzzles and remember long-term memories. An image of each of these creatures can be seen on the slide. Phylum Echinodermida, commonly known as sea stars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers, are renowned for their unique body structure and distinct features. They generally possess radial symmetry and have five arms, which are often accompanied with spines on their exoskeleton. These creatures are widespread in all kinds of marine habitats, from shallow waters to the depths of the ocean. Furthermore, they are remarkable for their ability to regenerate tissue and organs, making them a fascinating target of scientific research. Echinoderms are an extraordinary group of marine creatures with a pronounced radial body plan. Varieties include sea stars, sea urchins and sea cucumbers, each of which possess remarkable features that set them apart and make them a marvelous representation of aquatic life diversity. They are adapted to life on the ocean floor, relying on tube feet to move and spines for defense against potential predators. Echinoderms are essential for a functional ocean environment and provide us with valuable insights. Echinodermida is the next topic of discussion. Echinoderms are a type of marine organism that do not have a chordate body structure and have an enterocelomate type of body cavity. As adults they show pentamerous radial symmetry and as larvae are bilaterally symmetrical. Their skin is also thick and covered in spines. Echinoderms are an amazing group of aquatic invertebrates which can be encountered in waters both shallow and deep worldwide. These organisms are marked by endoskeletal spines and ossicles as well as a distinct ambulacral or water vascular system, enabling the creatures to move, feed and respire. The most remarkable aspect of echinoderms is the modification of their spines to form, pedicellariae. All of these qualities, and more, make echinoderms some of the most interesting and distinct marine animals. The image shows the water vascular system of an invertebrate. It is made up of a main vessel from which several fluid-filled canals extend. These canals terminate in ampullae that are also filled with fluid, primarily being used for movement and capturing prey. This useful system is a demonstration of the numerous and varied types of invertebrates. Anatomy of invertebrates is the focus of this slide. Unlike vertebrates, invertebrates do not have a circulatory system and rely on simple diffusion to transport food and waste products. In addition, they have a rudimentary respiratory system, as well as a poorly developed nervous system. Furthermore, invertebrates do not possess a brain and their sense organs are not as well developed compared to those of vertebrates. Invertebrate phyla, with genders appearing identical but separate, exhibit sexual reproduction requiring external fertilization. Their remarkable ability to regenerate and reproduce cells and tissue allows them to adapt and evolve in extraordinary ways, even with a seemingly basic design. We will be discussing the fantastic diversity of the animal kingdom, with focus on the extraordinary capability of invertebrates to regenerate severed body parts. For example, some species possess the incredible ability to willfully remove parts of themselves when in danger from predators, and those sections will often regrow. 
We likewise postulate that the first echinoderms descended from a special kind of larva referred to as Deplorula, which is an astonishing hypothesis. We shall take a look at the incredible diversity of invertebrate phyla. Splitting up further, invertebrate phyla are divided into two subphyla, Pelmatozoa and Eleutherozoa. Every subphylum has four distinct classes, Crinoidea, Asteroidea, Ophiroidea, and Echinoidea, with a fourth class, Holothuroidea, added as well. This wide range of phyla is just one of the many splendid aspects of the natural world. The subphylum Pelmatozoa includes just the class Crinoidea. This class is made up of sessile sea lilies and free swimming feather stars. These creatures have their mouth and anus on their upper surface, and lack a madreporite. Ambulacral grooves are also open. This class is just one of the diverse animals within animal diversity I invertebrate phyla. The phylum crinoidea are the oldest and most primitive forms of invertebrates. Their anatomy includes a calcareous test known as theca which encloses their viscera. Their arms are biramus and contain pinnules which help capture food. The mouth and anus are found on the upper surface, and ambulacral grooves are open. Furthermore, the tube feet do not have suckers. Animals from the phylum invertebrate exhibit a wide variety of characteristics, ranging from the madreporite to the pentacrinoid larva. These creatures can differ in their external attributes and in the way they live in their environment, such as whether they have cirri or not, or are stocked or sessile. Tilacrinus and bathocrinus, and neometra represent just a few of the many different forms and shapes these animals can have. This slide gives us an insight into the extraordinary diversity of invertebrates. Subphylum Eleutherozoa consists of four classes of animals. Asteroidea, Holothuroidea, Echinoidea and Ophiroidea. These animals are not fixed and have a downward-facing mouth. Furthermore, they have a madreporite and ambulacral grooves, of which the latter are closed in all classes, excluding Asteroidea. Without greetings, beginning with, today, or thanks. I am going to talk about a fascinating group of animals, the invertebrate phyla, or more specifically, the Asteroidea class within it. On this slide, you can find an image of one of the key features of this class, the pedicellariae. These two jawed structures are useful in food capture, production and cleaning the surface of the body, giving them an advantage in their environment. The arms of this class are not clearly demarcated and the ambulacral grooves are open, allowing for tube feet to bear suckers. This makes sea stars, or star fishes, excellent swimmers and predators with great adaptability. We will explore the world of invertebrates, focusing on three species as examples. Asterius, Astropectin, and Pentaceros. These three species may be different from each other but they do share certain similarities. These include their madreporite, which is located on the dorsal side, being in the same position in their respiratory organs, papillae and dermal branchiae, being the same. They also have a similar developmental cycle that includes bipinaria and brachialaria larvae. Let us examine each of them further. Ophiuroids are an intriguing collection of invertebrates that have adapted to survive in a variety of environments. They feature a central disc body from which five arms extend, without suckers for locomotion but instead relying on serpentine lashing. Ophiuroids can be found in many marine habitats, from tiny specimens a few centimeters in size to those measuring over a meter in length. They use their long, flexible arms for numerous activities such as capturing prey, navigating, and even as a form of protection. Ophiuroids are wonderfully diverse, making them incredibly interesting to study and enjoy. Ophiothrix, more commonly referred to as the spiny brittle star, is a fascinating example of the diversity of animals. Despite its unassuming appearance, this creature boasts some remarkable features, unlike most species, Ophiothrix lacks an anus and pedicellariae, and instead relies on Ophiopluteus larva to progress its development. As we further investigate different animal phyla, 
it is essential to appreciate the curious and extraordinary traits which every organism displays. Echinoidea is a phylum that includes species referred to as sea urchins, heart urchins, sand dollars, sea biscuits and cake urchins. These creatures typically have an oblong body covered with movable spines, however they lack arms and instead possess tube feet with suckers. The body is supported by calcareous ossicles found in the test, or corona. The madreporite and anus are located on the aberral side, while the ambulacral grooves are closed. Sea urchins are a fascinating species, possessing a complex five-jawed masticatory apparatus called Aristotle's lantern. In contrast, heart urchins have three-jawed pedicellariae. During development, echinopludeus larvae are formed and there are many varieties of sea urchin, such as echinus, echinocardium, echindiscus and clipiaster, all having evolved to be suited to their respective environments. The holothuroidea is an interesting and unique species that make up the animal kingdom. They have leathery skin and their dermis contains loose spicules. They have no arms, spines, or pedicellariae and their mouth is surrounded by retractile tentacles which are modified tube feet used for feeding. This class of marine animals includes the sea cucumber and its body is usually elongated along its oro axis. I'm going to talk to you about animal diversity I invertebrate phyla. We'll be examining the ambulacral grooves that are closed in the tube feet that bear suckers. We'll also be delving into the madreporite, which is internal and occurs in a coelom. Additionally, we'll be looking into the cloacal, respiratory trees, and studying indirect development with auricularia larva. To finish off, we'll be looking at some examples such as holothuria, synapta and thyoin holothuria. Hemichordata of the phylum invertebrates are marine organisms distinguished by a strong, solid, chitinous support rod known as a notochord that stretches through the body. Their sizes can range from microscopic to up to 3 feet long. Typically they have a worm-like shape with tentacles and feeding structures at the front. These creatures are mainly found in the depths of the ocean and can live up to 18 years. Hemichordates have a special type of reproduction where the fertilized egg is incubated in the female's body until it hatches. Phylum Hemichordata also referred to as half chordates, is a small group of marine animals that exhibits some similar features with chordates, including possessing a dorsal, hollow nerve cord. Found mainly in the ocean, they rely on small particles of food for sustenance. Enteropneusta is the most well-known class within hemichordata, which includes acorn worms of the worm-like variety. It is hypothesized that hemichordates stem from early chordates, however, they are different in many aspects, including the presence of a large proboscis, or feeding organ, and without the presence of a true notochord structure. The animals in question have a unique taxonomic history. Once believed to be part of the chordata phylum, they were seen as a bridge between chordates and invertebrates. Recent studies, however, have put them in their own phylum, the hemichordata. These creatures are worm-like marine animals, possessing bilateral symmetry, triploblastic organization and enterocelous body cavities. They are intriguing and mysterious, and keep fascinating us even today. Priapulida is a phylum of invertebrates composed of cylindrical animals consisting of an anterior proboscis, a collar, and a long trunk. They have a median buccal diverticulum called the stomachord extending into the proboscis. Found in both deep and shallow waters, priapulids are an ancient group of multicellular animals whose anatomy has been studied to gain insight into the evolution of animal life. Taking a look at one of the most interesting and diverse groups of animals, the invertebrate phyla, we can see that these animals are without a backbone and can come in many different shapes and sizes. Their circulatory system is of an open type and includes a dorsal heart, while their respiration is done through paired gills that open into the pharynx. The proboscis gland acts as their excretory organ, and development is indirect and includes a ternary larva. It is quite interesting to gain knowledge of the complexity of life, and the invertebrate phyla provide an excellent platform to understand this. Discussing the animal diversity, 
invertebrate phyla, from class 2. Terebranchia. These organisms are commonly known as acornworms and they are free, solitary animals which burrow into sediments. An example of such organism is Balanoglossus. Class 1. Enteropneusta also pose as sedentary, colonial tube-dwelling animals like Rhabdoplora and Cephalodiscus. It's important to understand the complexity of animal diversity and the importance of each organism. Thank you for your attention.